What's up gamers, Cryptico here, and welcome back to Lowering the Mark, a show where I analyze the current and former world records of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe time trial runs to see how these records get faster over time. We'll look at elements such as the loadout, racing lines, and mushroom usage to better understand what's bringing these times down. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when my videos go live. Welcome to the Season 6 finale and the second episode of the day. I promised to double upload this week and I'm pretty sure I delivered on that promise. Remember, episode 59 came out today as well, so make sure to watch that either after or before this one. Shout out to everyone who stuck around for the whole season, your support means so much to me. Now let's cap off season 6. For today's episode, we're looping back to the special cup again for the final course at the fastest speed, Bone Dry Dunes at 200cc. On May 24th, 2017, the world record for this course was set at 1 minute 23.033 seconds by the French player Power. Fast forward a few years to July 15th, 2021, and the record was brought down to 1 minute 19.647 seconds by the Australian player Panda. That's a 3.3 second improvement between records and a 4% faster time. Our former world record holder Power has broken 37 world records across 10 unique runs and has spent just over 100 days holding at least one world record. Our current world record holder Panda has broken 131 world records across 19 unique runs and has spent over 750 days holding at least one of his 9 current world records. At pre-release, the world record was just a smidge over 127, but it quickly got down to the 122-23 range mostly thanks to the French player Power. After he gave up on trying to go 121, American player Jimmy stepped up and beat his time by two tenths of a second for the sub. 111 days later, Power responded by taking over two tenths off Jimmy's record, but no more than two days would go by before Thomas and Themo stepped up and brought the record down even further. Themo's 121.0 was the top time for over 460 days and he was so close to getting the sub, but Panda swooped in to steal it near the end of 2019. Five days would go by before ARMY put up a pair of world records, and then it was Panda's turn to light it up. He dropped 14 consecutive world records and established a reign of over 700 days while also getting the elusive 119 and taking the record down by a few more tenths. In total, the record was broken only 52 times by 10 different players. These loadouts look pretty different from each other, but their performance is surprisingly similar. Power goes with the combo of Roy driving the pipe frame with the rollers and the cloud glider. Panda goes with the combo of Rosalina driving the bitty buggy with the azure rollers and the paper glider. At first glance, it looks like Panda has a worse loadout, and you'd be right if we were just focusing on top speed, the stat where Power leads by a smidge over half a point. As we go further down, however, we see that Panda is the one that falls off. His acceleration, handling, and mini turbo stats are close to Panda's, but they're not where they need to be to put up a strong record, much less get under 120. This course is alright, except for like half of it, you're driving on dirt which means you slide around for no reason, and the skeletal parado plants have seemingly unlimited range. But other than that, this course is a solid D plus tier. The time trial, however, is very interesting because the run gets very complex and precise at 200cc. Let's dive into it. Power starts off with a rocket start and heads into the first turn before grabbing a super mini turbo. After that, he'll chain two quick mini turbos together before drifting around this long turn and cutting it short for the super mini turbo. One quick mini turbo before the ramp will close out S1. Panda starts off the race and immediately goes for this turn skip to cut out the entire first turn thanks to that mini turbo. Next, he'll chain the same two mini turbos as Panda before drifting around the next turn for the quick super mini turbo and normal one before the ramp. You could clearly see that right from the jump, Panda had a time save ready to go and pulls it off successfully here. It's also the main reason his lead already sits at 6 tenths of a second going into S2. Power drifts off the ramp and carries his drift around the left side of the Piranha Plant for the 3 coins and an Ultra Mini Turbo. Next, he rides out the boost through the Bone Cage and collects 2 Jump Boosts before taking the glider. Panda also carries his drift off the ramp and goes left around the Piranha Plant for an Ultra Mini Turbo. After that, he just copies power by riding out the Ultra Mini Turbo boost across the Bone Cage while collecting the same two jump boosts before going off the glider ramp. Now that is a section that looked absolutely identical for both racers, but probably because of the longer lasting Ultra Mini Turbo, Panda has stretched his lead to over a second going into S3. Power goes off the glider, lands in this cave, and gets a super mini turbo while collecting 3 coins around the first turn. To close out the lap, he starts drifting towards this dirt patch and uses his mushroom to cut a little bit of the final turnout before crossing the finish line. 
Panda also goes off the glider, lands in the cave, and collects the three coins plus a super mini turbo. His next drift, however, starts way earlier as he uses his first mushroom to pull off this shortcut that cuts way more out of the final turn than Power did. He collects the super mini turbo and zooms right through the finish line to close out lap 1. Now, what's interesting here is even though that cut looked like it saved so much time, Panda's lead only increased by around a tenth of a second as he sits ahead of Power by 1.1 seconds after lap 1. Into lap 2, Power actually hits a little turn skip of his own off the normal mini turbo. After that, the rest of this section is pretty much the same as what we saw on lap 1. Chained mini turbos and a quick drift for a super one around the long turn before the ramp. Panda also hits the turn skip on lap 2, but he modifies it a bit with a different angle and gets a super mini turbo instead. This one really requires good timing because the super mini turbo won't charge until he hits the dirt and if he doesn't hop immediately after, he'll lose the boost and kill the run right there. After that, he'll chain two more mini turbos together and another super one around the long turn before heading over the ramp ahead by 1.4 seconds at the end of S1. Power carries his drift off the ramp and goes around the piranha plant on a tighter line for the ultra mini turbo. Next, he'll be back on the bone cage hitting two jump boosts before going off the glider into S3. Panda also carries his drift off the ramp but goes on the right side of the piranha plant and still gets the ultra mini turbo as he heads onto the bone cage for the same jump boost before taking the glider. Going around the right side over the left side saves a pretty decent chunk of time over that part of the course. I'm not sure how much exactly, but Panda's lead did increase by 6 tenths of a second as it now sits at over 2 seconds at the end of S2. Power goes off the glider, lands in the cave, and drifts tighter around the first turn for the same super mini turbo. He then goes for the same shortcut on lap 1, but enters at a better angle resulting in more time saved before grabbing the super mini turbo and crossing the finish line. Panda also glides to the cave and drifts tight around the first turn for the super mini turbo. Let's slow down his shortcut so we can really take a look at it. He starts his drift so early because there's a little bump that elevates the cart so he can charge his drift for longer and use his mushroom later than you might think. Once he does, he's in a position to hairpin around these bones for the tightest possible cut while still carrying a lot of speed from that mushroom. Once he comes out of that, he crosses the finish line and remains ahead by over 2 seconds after outsplitting Power's lap 2 by 1 second. Into the final lap, both racers hit their turn skips around the first turn and go on to chain two more mini turbos followed by a quick super run around the next turn. Into S2, Power carries a drift around the left side of the plant while Panda carries his drift around the right side, both resulting in an ultra mini turbo before heading on to the bone cage. Two jump and spin boosts later, they go off the glider and fly towards the cave for yet another super mini turbo and then set themselves up for their version of this mushroom cut to close out the race. Panda comes across the finish line and posted a time that was 3.3 seconds faster than Power's former world record. So by taking better lines, hitting better turn skips, and cutting out more of that last turn than Power, Panda was able to cap off his 14th consecutive world record on this course. He was there to do the impossible and sub under 120, and now he's taken it down by nearly 3 more tenths of a second. Let's hear a little more about how he made that happen. What was going through your mind when you broke this world record? I was pretty happy at the time to get this world record. I'd imagine there's a lot of resets that happen when you don't do the first NISC properly. Would you say that's the hardest part of the run, or is it not choking on the mushroom cut on lap 3? Honestly, there are so many very hard parts. Luckily, I've gotten consistent at doing the NISC at the very beginning, but it can still be a pain from time to time. This is the third course you've put up 14 consecutive world records on. Was doing that any harder than putting up 21 consecutive records on Grumble Volcano, or do you not really focus on consecutive records and solely go for personal improvement? Breaking 14 consecutive records on this track was harder than breaking 21 on Grumble Volcano. I'm pretty sure that Bone Dry Dunes is my most played track. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Congrats on your world record, and good luck on any further attempts at improving it. The best known splits for this run show that there's still some substantial improvement that can be made to this record. It should come as no surprise that Panda owns all three of the best known splits, but what might be interesting is that two of which are a whole tenth of a second faster than his world record laps. Of course, I'm excluding his world record lap 3 as it is the best known split, but clearly there's still some time that can be knocked off, and I'm sure Panda is taking that as a personal challenge to lower his own mark even further, or maybe someone else might spoil the fun in the future. The worldwide top 10 consists of 6 national and 4 continental record holders. Panda sits at the top, nearly 6 tenths back is ARMY in 2nd, and another 3 tenths back is Canadian record holder Eternal X. 4th and 5th place belong to Japanese players Hickey and Tane, who share 2 one hundredths of a second in separation. 
Sixth and eighth place belong to Spanish record holder Alberto and American record holder Plunky. Rounding out the top 10, we have Yoshi, Grant, and Kibo, who are all separated by just under 7 one hundredths of a second. Similar to super effects on Cheeseland, Panda has put so much theoretical dirt between himself and his next fastest competitor. He's the reason this record is under 120 in the first place, so it's fair to say he knows his when it comes to bone dry dunes. I don't see this record falling anytime soon, but then again, this is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe we're talking about. And that wraps up episode 60 and the final episode of season 6. Thanks to everyone who showed support throughout this season, it means a great deal to me and I can't wait to get back in the lab for season 7. We're nearly two thirds of the way through all the records in the game and there's still a lot of world records left to review, so I hope you'll stick around till the very end. As always, if you enjoyed this video, like and share it with your friends and comment on which course you'd like me to analyze next. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.